What's going on, Bay? Today I'm going to show you how to build this connected grid scrolling animation in Webflow with GSAP. So let's get started. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, so to set this up in Webflow, the main layout is controlled by this class called Grid. And Grid is an eight column grid. If I go ahead and select the grid settings, we can see there's eight columns here, all set to one FR, and then the rows are all auto. And we're going to manually set the position of grid items, which are the children of the grid. So you can see here now I have all these grid items and they have this little hash mark here to indicate that it's set with position manual. And you can see the very first one, column starts at one and ends at four and is row one to one. If I come to the second one, column starts at five, ends at seven, and is row two to two. If I set this to something like column end eight, then we can see it now takes up four columns instead of the three, but I like this back at seven. And so I just went through and created all of these individually. If we go ahead and open one of these grid items, we can see that it has a direct child of image wrap and another child of the caption. Now the caption is just set with position absolute down to the bottom left with five rem of padding from the left and then a negative five rem of padding pulling it down a little bit. And so we have that grid item set to position absolute just so that it knows what it's relative to. Now inside that grid item, I also mentioned image wrap and that just has overflow set to hidden such that as we're scaling the inner image here from something larger like five down to one, its original size, then none of that shows beyond the bounds of this image wrapper, which is the one being contained by our grid class. And so the last thing we'll look at is this image and it has just a class of image. The width is set to be 100% of its parent and it has a ratio of five by four, which is the size of the ratio of the image that I have in here. So when you want to build this, all you have to do is duplicate each grid item and set the column start end and row start end and that will get you it right in the position that you want it to be. So the other thing I'll show you is in our page settings here, we just are loading our code. So I'm loading the GSAP library here, then I'm loading the scroll trigger plugin here, and here I'm loading a code sandbox file. So let's explore how to write this code. So we can see we've got our grid set up here and it's nice and responsive, but now let's go ahead and start animating it. So the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna select all those grid items. And those are the items with the class name of grid item. So I'm using the query selector all method to get all of those. Now I'm gonna loop through all of those and for each grid item, I'm going to do something special. And that special stuff that I wanna do is defined within these two curly brackets right here. So let's go ahead and we'll get the previous element sibling. So to do that, I'm getting the item, I'm calling that grid item here. And there's this previous element sibling property that lives on it. And that's going to get the previous grid item. So if I'm at the second grid item here, then it's going to go ahead and look at this first one. So we have both the current item and the previous item. Now, as I mentioned before, we wanna set the origin based on whether this thing is to the right or to the left of the previous item. So in this case of Luminous Lagoon right here, it's to the right of its previous item. So we want the origin to start from the left side, but in the case of Twilight, it's to the left of Luminous Lagoon. So we wanna set the origin to 100% or the complete right side of the item. So we'll initialize this variable is left side and set it to a value of false. Now let's go ahead and see what we need to do to turn this is left side variable to true. So this only applies when an element has a previous element sibling. So we'll have this if statement here and then in here we'll check on some properties. So we wanna get the rightmost position of the current item and we can get that by looking at the item offset left and add the offset width to it and store that in a variable called current item right edge. So for example, the very second item, the current item right edge would be item offset left, which is the space from the left edge all the way to the left edge of the viewport plus the offset width, which is the width of the image right here. So I'm just calling it the width of the image, but it's really the width of its container, which is grid item, that div that we defined with the grid item class, but they're the same here, so it's great. Next, we'll get the leftmost position of the previous item and we'll add one just for a small buffer. So I'm going to define a variable previous item left edge and we'll say previous element sibling dot offset left plus one. So in this case here, the previous element sibling is this one here, and it's offset left would just be zero because it's starting here on the left edge. In the occasion of twilight right here, the previous element sibling dot offset left would be this one here. And so it would be whatever the pixel value is from this left edge of the image to the left edge of the viewport. And now what we're going to do is we're going to check if the current item right edge is less than the previous item left edge, then we'll flip is left side to true. We know that it would be an element that's on the left side like twilight. Now, once we know if an element is on the left side or not, we can set its transform origin. And to do that, we just define a new variable called origin X. And this is a ternary operated here. So what this is saying is if left side is true, 
then we set the origin to 100. Otherwise, we set it to zero. Oh yeah, by the way, if you just saw that ternary and you're like, what the heck is going on here? There's a question mark and a colon, never seen that before. Don't worry, just go to patreon.com slash webbay and click on JavaScript course and subscribe to get my complete fundamentals course that has assignments, quizzes, and Webflow projects all built in. So you're not just staring at a screen watching me explain. Anyways, back to me at a screen explaining. Next, we'll define our GSAP timeline. So I'm calling gsap.timeline here, and then I'm passing in our options object to specify how we want our timeline to work. And the two things that we want are we want to specify some defaults as well as a scroll trigger. And those take their own options object as well. So the default ease we're going to use is just power4.out. For scroll trigger, we're going to find the trigger, the start, the end, and the scrub. So for trigger, we'll set it to the item. That's each individual item, which again is the item with the grid item class. The start is when the top of that item is at the bottom of the viewport minus 10%. And then the end is when it's traveled 100% of its own height. And then the scrub value to one just defines a little bit of a lag such that we get a nice kind of smooth scrolling effect. Next, we'll go ahead and define our tweens. We're gonna be using from two animations here, which take three parameters. It takes the item to animate. It takes the starting state of the animation and the ending state of the animation. So the item is going to be the image wrap within our item. So we're calling query selector on item. And then we're passing that class of image wrap and then we'll define our beginning state and our end state inside of these options objects. So for the beginning state, we just wanna scale from zero and a transform origin of whatever we set in origin X up here and the Y value to 0%, of course. And we're going to go to a scale of one. So this is the animations that scaling our container from a value of zero so we don't see anything to actually show something. If we save and refresh our animation over here, we can start seeing that things are growing from zero to one but we're not really seeing any movement with the caption and we're not getting a dynamic movement of the image inside of its container. So let's keep going. We're gonna use two more from two animations. We wanna animate the image inside and we wanna animate the caption. So for the image inside, we've got our from two animation. We'll go ahead and select that image class and then we have our starting and ending states here. And we're going to animate from a scale of five and a transform origin of whatever we defined in the variable above to a scale of one. We can see that we're getting this dynamic image scaling, but it's a little bit off because what's happening is we're first doing the from two tween up here, which scales our image wrap from zero to one. And then we're doing our image animation after that. So not until that first animation is done, does it execute this second animation. And to make them happen at the same time, we can just pass a fourth parameter here of a value of zero. And that tells it, hey, start at the playhead of the previous animation. And now we can see that we're getting this dynamic effect of the two animations happening at the same time. So now let's go ahead and take care of our caption. For the caption, we'll have another from two animation. We'll go ahead and select that caption element by getting the caption within the item using query selector and then we'll define our starting and ending states. So for the starting state, we're gonna set the X percent to be either negative 100 or 100. And we want it to be negative 100 when is left side is true. So if it's a left side image, then it will start from negative 100 and come in from the left to the right. Otherwise it will come from the right to the left. And we're gonna start its opacity at zero as well. And then we're just going to ease it in with a little bit of a different ease so that we have an even more dynamic effect so that not everything is power four dot out. And we're going to set the X percent to zero. So it goes to its original location and we'll set the opacity to one. Now with this one, we want it all to happen at the same time of when this very starting animation starts. So we'll also pass it zero so that all these animations are happening at the same time in that timeline. And now we can see that we have our captions kind of coming in from the left or the right, depending on if it's a left or a right image. And we have our dynamic image scroll and this completes the animation. And you should check out my GSAP playlist if you like this video, because I have a ton of videos on how to use GSAP. So one of my favorite recent ones is this scroll trigger text animation, spicy slide, and I'll show you how to do that. It's like a middle out animation where the text starts from the center and goes emanates out towards the sides. So I'll put a link to that right here in the video. You should go check that out.